So there's a particular name for this. I, I we yeah, we'll, we'll I think we can get into what the is actually in the articles and specificity, but there's a title for this period that I, I think yeah. it's important for us to, to talk about so people know it's called the critical period. Um, yeah, could you give us some insight as to why it was critical or it is critical? Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, so um, I, I actually just did an edited volume called Reconsidering the Critical Period with my mm -hmm. colleague, uh, Chris Pearl. And one of the, the, the critical period is a term of art invented by a historian, a particular historian uh, named Fisk in writing in the 19th century hmm. to describe this period basically from the ending of the war for independence and the constitution. So he, it was called the critical period. Uh, and so that was taken up by many, many historians. And Fisk had lived through the civil war. And he said of all the period in American history, this was the most critical meaning uh, in his case, uh, it was critical because he thought that there was it was a real astonishing thing that the country actually survived this period. It was so critical that if, if the right things hadn't happened, i.e. if a new constitution hadn't come along uh, in the constitutional convention, then the country would have fallen apart and it would have experienced what he called a, a European outcome, which in the middle of the 19th century, he meant a lot of warring uh, mm. independent nations that would essentially you know, use up all the, their energy and population in fighting each other constantly, uh, which his experience of Europe was in the mid 19th century. Sure. You know, this is, um, and of course, you know, everybody's experience of Europe would be that through World War II, essentially, that Europe had been a fight for control and power between these various large states and small states, you know, for as long as anybody could remember. In fact, the British's whole policy was the balance of power of Europe, you know, making sure that Spain or France didn't take over all of Europe or then ultimately letting Germany take over all of Europe. And so it was a fight to make sure Europe didn't become controlled by one power. Whereas in the American case, uh, Fisk is basically saying America creates this lasting union, the Constitution, which is a union of perpetual peace amongst these states in the United States. And so you don't have these massive ongoing wars. Of course, he says that we lived through the Civil War. That was one major thing, which is something that I think he thought would have happened many, many more times uh, under the Articles of Confederation, because the Articles was a weak confederation, essentially a weak alliance. It claimed that it would be a perpetual alliance between the sovereign states who declared independence. But I mean, you could say you're perpetual, but that doesn't mean it's going to last. Right. Right. And it's important to note that before the revolution, people were, they, they looked at their states sort of as their country. So they'd say, I'm a Virginian, I'm a Pennsylvanian, how important that was to their identity. So that, you know, they didn't say I'm part of a, you know, United States. It's, yes, I'm yeah. a Virginian. That's right. And I don't think people called the United States by a single until well after the Civil War. I mean, the United States... Hmm are versus the United States is. Uh, 